The Cubs have won a series. They beat the Angels yesterday 5 to nothing to secure the series win over L.A. and put the Cubs back in the win column as they look forward to an interesting week against Baltimore and St. Louis on the road. Shota Imanaga was the Cubs' lone all-star named to the all-star game. Were there any other players deserving? That and more on the Cubs baseball channel. Make sure to like and subscribe. Get in that comment section. Let us know how you're feeling about this team as they trek forward toward the All-Star break and try to avoid selling for the third out of four seasons. Here is your invitation to our show. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Cubs Baseball Channel. My name is Anthony Pasquale on Twitter at Ant underscore Pasquale3. Important to note that the Cubs Baseball Channel is also on Twitter and on Instagram. Look up the Cubs Baseball Channel on Twitter. It's Cubs underscore channel. Find us on there. Engage with us on there. We're going to be posting all sorts of things on both of those uh, social media platforms. So make sure to follow us on there. Build up those pages just like you do our YouTube and we can continue to bring you some Cubs baseball channel content elsewhere. But we got a lot to get into after a Cubs win yesterday as the Cubs take the series against the Angels with a 5 nothing shutout. The Cubs return the favor from Saturday's 7 nothing shutout in favor of the Angels with a 5 nothing blanking of the Halos themselves. Um, a lot to get into about that game. We're going to start with Hayden Wesneski on the mound. He had a very strong start for Chicago, allowed only one hit in six in the third innings, only two strikeouts, so wasn't uh, particularly missing bats well, um, but he pitched excellent. And I would say uh, the Cubs starting rotation has not been the problem all season long. He's been a really good um Asset for the Cubs rotation has had some struggles in the bullpen, particularly keeping the ball in the ballpark, but only allowed one hit yesterday. He was masterful um, in relief. Porter Hodge pitched once it got a little wet and rainy. Luke Little came in uh, with the Cubs up 5-0, ended up allowing a hit, and then a couple of walks, dink and dunk, uh, got squeezed on a few uh, check swings, and then all of a sudden Hector Neris came in and got the final out for his 12th save of the season. Offensively, the Cubs got it done in a multitude of ways. Miguel Amaya had an RBI single. Nico Horner had a sack fly. Michael Bush hit into a double play, which scored a run. But Michael Bush also hit a two-run homer late in the game to give the Cubs a five-run lead. And he continues to prove himself. You know, we talk about uh, we've done a lot of hammering Jed Hoyer this year, and he didn't do enough to upgrade this team over the winter and all sorts of other things that we get mad at Jed Hoyer for. But one position of need for the Cubs was first base. Eric Hosmer, Trey Mancini uh, were bad last year, and the Cubs had to sacrifice Cody Bellinger's defense in center field to move him to first. Obviously, Mike Talkman last year and a little bit of this year, Pete Kerr Armstrong have, have made that an easier choice, but Michael Bush has been extremely reliable at first base. Uh, as you look at some of the first baseman in the National League, Mike, Michael Bush's numbers really stack up well. Um, across most counting stats, he's one, two, three, or four. Um, obviously, Bryce Harper and Freddie Freeman man that first base position, and I'm not saying Michael Bush is there yet. But after those two guys, um, he's having a better year than most of the other guys. According to a lot of the numbers, he's been better than uh, Matt Olson, Pete Alonzo, Paul Goldschmidt. Um, among others, but let's get into some of these statistics. Oh, also Reese Hoskins, who's a guy that a lot of Cubs fans wanted to be in that position. In terms of war, Michael Bush is fifth um, in the National League amongst first basements. He's fourth in OPS. He's right up there near the top in slugging. He is fifth on base percentage. He's third um, in terms of uh, let's see what else we've got in terms of on base percentage. Like we just said, he's third looking at some of these other statistics, batting average, he's fourth. So needless to say, Michael Bush has been extremely productive at first base. He proved it again yesterday, but here's why yesterday was so important. He crushed that home run off of a lefty. We've seen Craig council bench 
Michael Bush when the Cubs have played lefties. It's gotten Patrick Wisdom. It's gotten David Bodie uh, before the injury. It got Nick Madrigal into the lineup. But Michael Bush has proven not only can he hit against righties, he can hit against lefties. He's been very effective against lefties. So I would keep Michael Bush in the two hole, whether it's up against a righty or a lefty, and I would keep him in a lineup even if there's a lefty on the mound. Now, I'm not saying he's got to play 162. You can give him a day off or move him to second or third to, to make it work with the rest of your lineup. But Michael Bush is a guy that I would want in the lineup just about every day. And we talked about Shota Imanaga earlier. Um, I believe yesterday we released the show. Shota Imanaga is going to be the Cubs representative at the All-Star Game. Great for him. He's been fantastic this season. But as you think about some of the other guys that could have been named All-Stars, Michael Bush comes to mind. He's had a very quiet, really strong season. Obviously, Bryce Harper and Freddie Freeman deservingly um, are going to be in the All-Star game for the National League. Christian Walker is another guy who might be deserving. But Michael Bush has been a very strong player for the Cubs. Um, as you think about some other players that could be Options. I think Justin Steele immediately comes to, to mind. He just had his complete game, a 2.95 ERA on the season. Um, he's been very good this season. Uh, he's just missed some time due to injury, so I didn't think he would get picked. Um, if a pitcher decides not to pitch or maybe an injury happens in the next few weeks, I would not be surprised if Justin Steele hear, hears his name called to be a National League All-Star. And then Ian Happ had a really late push for it. Um, his counting stats improved extremely over the last week or so. He's up to 13 homers and 52 RBI on the season with an OPS just a tick under 800. That's all-star type of number. Um, Ian Happ is a guy I think made a late push to potentially be an all-star. Another guy that if somebody were to get hurt or decide not to play in the all-star game, maybe Ian Happ calls. But show to Imanaga. Currently the only Cubs selected, so congratulations to him. A very strong season thus far. He's had a 3.16 ERA on the year, which was well below two and below one for a large portion before he had a kind of a rough start not too long ago. Three innings, gave up 10 runs. But aside from that, Imanaga has been excellent. Um, 91 innings pitched on the year, 92 strikeouts, 7-2 and two record. Congratulations on Shota Imanaga going to the All-Star game. I want to get into the lineup the other day as well. Um, David Bodie and Patrick Wisdom started on Saturday. The Cubs had Miles Mastroboni at third on Sunday. Pete Armstrong has been out of the lineup for a number of days now after sliding into third base and injuring his hand. Um, similar to the Nico Horner fiasco that has happened twice over the last month or so, the Cubs have elected to not put Pete Kerr Armstrong on the injured list and instead just left him on the bench, potentially available um, as an option if the Cubs need him late in ball games. But we saw it with Nico Horner's hamstring. We saw it with Nico Horner's hand. And now we're seeing it with Pete Kerr Armstrong's hand. The Cubs are playing one man short, which is something that they continue to do and it baffles me. But uh, hopefully we see Pete Kerr Armstrong um, this week, either at Baltimore or at St. Louis. Let's do a quick standings check. Yesterday was a pretty good day for the Cubs as they got the win, but they didn't do a ton of damage. They're now 11 games behind Milwaukee, still in last place, and five and a half behind the third place team in the National League wild card standings, and they still have six teams to jump if they want to get into that third spot. But the Cubs have it right in front of them if they want to continue to climb. They just have to go out there and get more wins. They currently stand at a 6.6 .6 chance to make the playoffs with a 1.7% chance to win the division. And this week, the Cubs take on the Orioles Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then they've got the Cardinals for a weekend set before the All-Star break. Friday, doubleheader Saturday, and a game on Sunday. That'll do it for this edition of the Cubs Baseball Channel. Guys, thank you so much for joining us and tuning in, make sure to like and subscribe, ring the bell, get in the comment section, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and continue to uh, appreciate and join and engage with our page here on YouTube. Uh, get in that comment section. Let us know if you think any other Cubs were deserving to make the All-Star game. But for now, we will talk to you tomorrow and preview the rest of this week as the Cubs try to make some noise before the All-Star break and the eventual trade deadline. Go Cubs!